This is going to be a quick little video on how to do line drawings or which are sometimes referred to as skeletal structures. Um, because often uh, drawing organic molecules can be really pretty tedious because of all the, the individual bonds on all the hydrogens and, and things like that. So um, organic chemists came up with a, a form of shorthand, which they call line drawings or skeletal structures. And they're pretty simple, really. Um, and there's a, a couple of rules that need to be followed in order to do them. So the first rule is that each end and bend in the drawing is a carbon. Okay. Second thing is that all carbon hydrogen bonds are assumed. because there are so many of them often, okay? And then the third thing is that all bonds to heteroatoms are shown. Heteroatoms are shown. And when we're talking about heteroatoms, we're talking about anything that's not carbon or hydrogen. Okay, so oxygens, chlorines, bromines, iodines, nitrogens, anything like that. Anytime we're showing a uh, connection to one of those, we have to actually write, uh, show the bond. So let's, the easiest way to do this is to just sort of get into, uh, get into some examples. So, simple one, and we're also going to get into a little bit of, of uh, how to deal with condensed uh, chemical structures. Um, so if I do a condensed structure for ethane, and hopefully at this point you've, you've at least looked over the, uh, the prefixes um, and the suffixes so that you know that ethane is a chain of two carbons singly bonded. So we would have CH3, CH3, okay? And that's the condensed um, formula. So... If I draw this out in sort of a, a, um, a full structure, I'm going to have something that looks like this. Okay. Now, if I do a line drawing for this, all I have to do is that. Okay. Because every end is assumed to be a carbon. So if I sort of put things in here, that's the same thing as showing that. Each end of every line and every bend, we'll get into the bends here in a second, um, is that. And then the carbon-hydrogen bonds are all assumed. So we assume that these are all here. Okay, And this is also sort of built on the fact that um, carbon likes to form four bonds with things. Okay, So if I take those out. There's my line drawing for ethane. So let's, uh, let's get a little bit more complex. Let's look at propane. Okay, and prop means that we should have a chain of three carbons. Ane says that they should all be singly bonded. So if I draw the condensed formula for this, it's going to look like that. And if I draw the full structure, I'll have a chain of three carbons. All their hydrogens. And as you can already tell that drawing all of these hydrogens can be pretty tedious. Okay? But if I do a line drawing for this, it comes out like that. Okay? And again, this is every end and every bend is a carbon. So we assume that there's a carbon right here, right there, and right there. And all of the hydrogens are assumed. Okay, so let's take those back out. 
right? And there's our line drawing for propane. Okay. Some more examples coming your way here. So let's take a look at, um, and if you haven't gone through the naming yet, I'm gonna to get to that next, the, the nomenclature stuff. But if I wanna draw one that's called 2-methyl, two 2-methyl two propane, my condensed formula is going to look like this. CH3, CH, CH3, CH3, okay? And this, this part in parentheses means that it is attached to that one. Okay, whatever comes immediately after is attached to that thing, okay? So if I draw a, um, and I'm sort of running out of room here a little bit, um, draw the structure for that, I'm gonna have one that looks like, I'll have my propane, and then I'll have my methyl group on the second carbon. That's why we say 2-methyl. Okay, but if I do a line drawing for it, so simple. Okay, so the methyl group is this one right here. Okay, remember every end of every line is a carbon and all the hydrogens attached are assumed. Okay, I could look at that as, as the, the so, sort of stick on the left could be the methyl group or the stick on the right. Either way, I've got a chain of three carbons with a methyl group on the middle carbon. Okay. So, more examples. Let's look at one called 2-propanol. Two 2-propanol. Two its condensed formula is going to look like I'm still going to have a propane, three-carbon chain. Okay, and my full structure I have a three carbon chain, chain, that's the prop. And then two propanol means that I've got an alcohol group on the second carbon. Okay. And our line drawing is going to look like this. Okay. Remembering that any bond to a hetero atom, anything that's not a carbon or hydrogen has to be shown. So I'm gonna show the bond to the oxygen. And because the hydrogen is also bonded to a hetero atom, I'm gonna show that bond as well. Okay, but I still have my, my main part of the line drawing, CCC. Okay, so that's the gist of uh, dealing with line drawings, and they're super helpful and super convenient uh, for dealing with structures of organic molecules. And if you go on to, to organic chemistry, you're going to get very, 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 very comfortable with them. So let's talk about nomenclature a little bit. Okay, and let's switch to, um, let's keep it in blue. Okay, so naming of organic molecules. And there are some rules, um, and these rules are outlined in uh, the PowerPoint from Dr. Steubens, um, but sometimes it's helpful to have uh, a, a walkthrough. All right, so step one, we need to find the longest continuous chain of carbons. Oops. Step two, we're going to number the chain to give the substituent, so 
substituent the lowest number. Okay, and when I'm talking about substituents, anything that's a substituent is anything that's outside of the normal, just straight chain of carbons. So if I were um, talking about this 2-propanol, the substituent in 2-propanol is the alcohol group. Okay, a substituent can also be referred, uh, can also refer to double or triple bonds, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Let's see, so step three, we're gonna name the substituent. And then four, we're gonna start with the substituent number. And then we're going to name the substituent and then name the chain. And five, when two or more substituents I'm just going to call that stub, subs um, are present. List them in alphabetical order. Now, the one uh, thing to remember with this is that prefixes don't count. Okay, when we're trying to determine alphabetizing our substituent, if our substituent has a di, a tri, or a tetra on it, um, something like that, then we don't look at that as far as um, alphabetizing. So if I have dimethyl, it still counts as M for methyl. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's do some examples, all right, and hopefully you, you wrote all this down, and if you need to, give me a pause, write those, uh, those things down, because that list will be helpful. So let's take a look at a line drawing. One, hmm. Okay, and remember, every end and every bend in the line is a carbon, so we have a carbon that is, a carbon chain that is six carbons long. So we have hexane, okay? Hex for six, ane for single bonds, okay? So pretty straightforward. Now if I alter that structure just a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna look at that and I'm going to, if I didn't already know that it was hexane, I would look for the longest continuous chain of carbons. So I can look at this two ways. I have one chain right here that is six carbons long, or I have a chain here that is six carbons long. Okay, really doesn't matter at this point for, uh, because of where I have placed that uh, substituent. Okay, but we know that we've got hexane, right? Because we've got a chain of six carbons. Right, um, so we've identified our longest chain. Now, let's identify our substituent. Okay, and we're gonna uh, actually first we should number to give the substituent the lowest um, lowest value. So what that means is if I start numbering on the right with carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, right. That's going to give my substituent the value of 5, right? But if I number from the left, now that gives my substituent a value of 2, and that's preferable, okay? And that substituent is just a CH3 group, so it is a methyl group. Okay, a single carbon methyl, 
okay? So I'm going to give that methyl the, the designation of two. So I'm gonna say two dash methyl, and then I name my chain, two methyl hexane. Let's just keep going, getting more complicated. Right. Okay, so again, I still have the longest chain is six carbons long. There's my longest chain right there. All right, so six carbons, so I know that I've got hexane. Six carbons all singly bonded. Okay, so let's take a look at our substituents. So I've got one substituent here, oops, whoops, <laughs> and one here. All right, and they're both methyls. All right, so now I've got two methyl groups, and I'm going to number so that they have the lowest possible value. Right, so I've got two methyl groups, both on the second carbon, on carbon number two. Right, so two methyls means that I say dimethyl, and I have to say where they both, where each of those methyls are. So I'm going to say two, two comma two dash dimethyl hexane. Okay. So I could have methyl groups on different carbons. I could say 2,4-dimethyl or 2,6-dimethyl. Okay. Either way, um, I need to designate which carbons those methyls are on and how many methyls there are. So if I have... One that looks like like this. Okay, I still have my longest chain is hexane, but now I've got a what we refer to as a chloro group, a chloro substituent, and I've got a methyl substituent. Okay, so I'm going to number so that I still have my lowest value for um, a substituent. So I'm not gonna start numbering from the right, I'm gonna start my numbering from the left so that I get a two there. So think about it, if I started numbering from the right, my substituents would be at three and five, but if I number from the left, they're at two and three, okay? So I have a methyl group and a chloro group, more than one substituent, so I have to put them in alphabetical order. C become, comes before M, so I'm gonna put them in alphabetical order. So this comes out to look like three dash chloro dash two dash methyl hexane. Okay. So regardless of where they are, we put them in alphabetical order and we give the number to which carbon that substituent lives on. Lots of examples. Okay. So taking a look at what we have here. So it looks like the one we just did in a certain fashion, it still has that that main chain that I drew first. But remember, we need to find the longest continuous chain of carbons. If I look at this, I have six. Right? But if I look at this one, I have seven carbons. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? So now, all singly bonded, that makes this a heptane, 
right? So let's take a look at what our substituent is. Our substi if, if that is uh, that sort of C-shaped thing is our longest chain, my substituent lives here, and it's a methyl group. Right, so I'm gonna number so that that has the lowest number. So if I start numbering from the right, that sits at carbon five. But if I start numbering from the left, it sits at carbon three. Right, so I'm gonna say three methyl heptane. So again, we want to find our longest chain. Right? That's always our first task. So if I look here, I have six carbons. If I look here, I have six carbons. But if I look here, I have seven, All right? So I'm still at a heptane, All right? So now I need to identify my substituents. So I've got one here, one there, and one there. Okay, anything that's branching off of my main chain, right? So my left-hand bit is a methyl. My right-hand bit is also a methyl. And this uh, one in the middle is an ethyl. Right, so meth is one, eth is two, prop is three, bute is four. Okay, so that's why we get methyl and ethyl. So our substituent in the middle has two carbons on it. So that's why it's called an ethyl group. Right. So I'm going to number to give things the lowest uh, set of numbers. So if I start numbering from the left, my first substituent happens at carbon three. But if I start measure, uh, numbering from the right, I get a substituent at carbon two. All right, so I have two methyls, so that's gonna be dimethyl, and I have an ethyl, Right? So remember, when I'm alphabetizing, the die doesn't count. So E comes before M, so I'm going to list my ethyl group first. So my ethyl is at carbon 4, so we say 4-ethyl. And then I have to tell where both of my methyl groups are, and they're at carbons 2 and 5. So I say 2,5-dimethyl. Heptane, and it should be all in one line, but I'm going to write it right, right below. All right, so let's do one more like this. So remember the bond to a heteroatom, okay? So I've got a carbon, so this is my last carbon, right? So there is not a carbon right there, okay? So this one is my, my last carbon in the chain, right? And my longest chain is still um, seven carbons long. Right, so I'm still dealing with heptane. All right, I still have two methyl groups, but this time I also have a chloro group. Right, so remember this substituent is listed as chloro. 
All right, so I'm gonna number to give everything the lowest set of, of values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so I've got a chloro, I've got a dimethyl, and I've got a ethyl. Right? So alphabetizing the chloro comes first, then the ethyl, then the methyl, right? Remembering the dye does not count for the um, alphabetizing. And this one's gonna be quite long, so. All right, so we have a one chloro, four ethyl. I have to say where both of my dimethyls are and they're sitting at carbons two and five, dimethyl. Heptane. Right? It's a bit like writing writing a sentence in a foreign language. Okay. So let's take a look at um, another um, sort of aspect of things. So dealing with alkenes and alkynes. Okay. Remembering alkenes have double bonds, alkynes have triples, right? So when dealing with alkenes and alkynes, we use the longest chain that encompasses the double or tripler bond. double or triple. And then we number, we give the double triple bond, double or triple, we give the double triple bond the lowest number. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. So we didn't really talk about this when we were doing our, our naming examples, but we still have the ends of every line and every bend is, is a carbon. So I've got a carbon here, 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 and there. Okay, so I've got four carbons long, so it's butene. Okay, but meaning four, in telling us that we have a double bond, okay? So I'm gonna number this so that it has the um, double bond giving, having the lowest number. So I'm gonna number from the right, okay? So simply we're gonna say one butene, okay? Or I can say but, dash one dash in, okay? Both of those are acceptable ways to write that, right? I think one butene is um, pretty straightforward, but if you um, needed to describe in a different way um, where the double bond is, the second version would work. For example, if you had a mixture of double and triple bonds in your uh, molecule, you might want to use the second version of things. So we still so we still have our longest chain encompassing is one, two, three, four, five carbons long. So we've got pent double bond tells me it's ene. Right? And we're gonna number so that it, the double bond has the lower value. Okay, if I started numbering from the left my double bond would have a value of three, but if I number from the right, the double bond has a value of two. So we say two pentene, or I could say pent dash two dash ene. 
Okay, both are acceptable. All right, a couple more examples of these. All right, so finding the longest chain that encompasses our um, double bond. That's going to be right there. Right, so it's still a five carbon chain, so pentene, right? I number to give the double bond the lowest value, okay? So in this case, the double bond is gonna take precedence over the methyl group. Okay, so I'd say one, two, three, four, five, right? And I've got a methyl up here Right, so I'm going to say, but I still number the substituents, or I still list the substituents first in my naming. Okay, so I'm going to say four methyl two pentene. Okay, or I could say four methyl two or four methyl pent two ene. Okay, that is also acceptable. Now, this may look a little bit strange, but it uh, has to do with um, honoring the fact that a triple bonded pair of carbons is a linear structure. Okay, so looking at what we have here, this is a little different uh, in terms of um, where are the carbons, right? So ends of every lines and every bend and bends in every lines. So we obviously we have carbons at these places, right? But we can also consider we can also look at this in terms of the ends of each line also occur right there and right there. Okay, so I've got a carbon chain that is seven carbons long, right? And I'm going to number it so that my triple bond has the lower value. So I'm going to call this 3-heptine. Okay, hept meaning 7, ein meaning that there's a triple bond. All right. And our last example So whether I go with the sort of upper set of chain or the lower set of chain, either way, I've got a seven carbon chain here. So I can look at it right there, or I can look at it right there. Either way, I've got a seven carbon chain, okay? So it's still a hept, right? And I've got a triple bond, so it's a heptine. So I'm going to give precedence to the double uh, to the triple bond when I'm numbering okay and then at carbon 5 I've got an ethyl group right so when I give the name I put still put the substituent first in the name right so I've got 5 ethyl 3 that's where the triple bond lives, three heptine. Okay, I can also say, just like before, I can say hept three ine 